Greeting, peace be with you. As a continuation of my previous video on shift register experiment, this video will shift concentration to controlling of an 8x8 LED matrix with shift registers. To start with, let's see the last demo of my previous video. In case you have missed my previous video on shift register, you may want to refer to it to get the background of this 8x8 LED matrix experiment. The first thing to do in this video is to modify my last experiment, by simply connecting the rest of the column pins of the LED matrix to ground. However, those 8 column pins will be connected to ground via 8 dip switches. The purpose of those 8 dip switches will become apparent during the demo. Besides connecting the 8 column pins to ground, I will also modify the sketch so that in auto mode, the speed of shifting can be varied, from the original slow speed of delaying 500 milliseconds each round, to a much higher speed. After connecting dumb display Android app, ensure that show commands, is off. As you can see, the clock buttons still work as expected. But this time, all the 8 columns will work together to form lines. The UI is basically the same as last time, except that a bar is added. This bar is used to control the speed of auto mode. As you can see, when the middle of the bar is clicked, that is half the original delay is used, line runs twice as fast. See that if the bar is cut even further. As expected, the speed of the line runs even faster. How fast can it go? Yes, when there is no delay, the line runs so fast that all the 64 LEDs appear to be all on. In fact, this is how the good old CRT TV works. As you can see, when I change the dip switches, I sort of change the pattern rendered by the 64 LEDs. You get the idea, this is the mechanism how 16 pins can be used to control 64 LEDs of the 8x8 LED matrix. Each row is displayed one after the other. As seen in the demo, when this happens really fast, a pattern will be rendered. When display the first row, control the columns so that only those first row LEDs will be on. When display the second row, control the column so that only those second row LEDs will be on. So on and so forth, until all eight rows displayed one by one. Two shift registers will be used to control the row pins and the column pins of the 8x8 eight eight LED matrix. In this experiment, 74LS146N will be used for the row pins, 74HC595N will be used for the column pins. Both 74LS146N and 74HC595N are 8-bit serial in parallel out shift registers. The difference is that 74HC595N has more functions, more noticeably, it is sort of having two registers, bit shifting is done on its internal register, it is only when a latch pin is pulsed, the bits in the internal register are copied to the output register. As a result, the action of bit shifting can be hidden until needed to show the output. For controlling the row pins, we just need to be able to turn on a single bit at a time, one after the other. Hence, 74LS146N can serve the purpose. For controlling the column pins, we will need to control that several bits may be on at the same time. Hence, 74HC595N is more suitable. Two pins will need be connected to the row shift register. One for the shift pin, one for the clock pin, three pins will need be connected to the column shift register. One for the shift pin, one for the clock pin, and one for the latch pin. Therefore, a total of five pins are needed to be connected to the shift registers for controlling the 8x8 LED matrix. Now, let's see the connections. 
optionally, for HC06 connections. Connect VCC of HC06 to VBUS of PICO. Connect ground of HC06 to a ground pin of PICO. Connect RX of HC06 to GP7 of PICO. Connect TX of HC06 to GP8 of PICO. Note that the PICO's UART1 will be used for communicating with HC06. For 74LS164N connections. Connect VCC to 3.3 volt of PICO. Connect GND to a ground pin of PICO. Connect A to VCC of the shift register itself. Connect B to GP6 of PICO. Connect CLK to GP27 of PICO. Connect CLR also to 3.3 volt of PICO. Connect QA to QE to the row pins of the 8x8 LED matrix. For 74HC595 N connections, connect VCC to 3.3 volt of PICO. Connect GND to a ground pin of PICO. Connect DS to GP22 of PICO. Connect SHCP to GP20 of PICO. Connect STCP to GP21 of PICO. Connect OE to a ground pin of PICO. Connect MR to 3.3 volt of PICO. Connect Q0 to Q7 to the column pins of the 8x8 LED matrix. For this experiment, Arduino IDE will be used as the development environment. To set up Arduino IDE for Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board development, you may want to refer to my last video about shift register experiment. Let's review the basic sketch to control the 8x8 LED matrix to display an arrow shape. Lines 2 and 3 define pins to connect to the control pins of the row shift register 74LS164N. Shift pin is the pin to control the shift bit to shift to the register. Clock pin is used to trigger bit shifting when it is pulsed. Lines 5 to 7 define pins to connect to the control pins of the column shift register 74HC595N. Shift pin is the pin to control the shift bit to shift to the shift register's internal register. Clock pin is used to trigger bit shifting when it is pulsed. Latch pin is used to trigger copying of the internal register bits to the output register. Lines 9 to 16 declare the array, data. The array is used to store data representing the LEDs to turn on or off, for the shape to show with the 8x8 LED matrix. The array has 8 values. The bits of each array value represent the on-off states of a row of LEDs of the LED matrix. Note that the values are directly shifted to the column register. Hence, a bit value of 0 will turn on the corresponding LED, bit value of 1 will turn it off. In the setup block, lines 21 and 22 set up the pin mode of the row shift register control pins. Similarly, lines 24 to 26 set up the pin mode of the column shift register control pins. Line 28 set the initial state of the clock of the row shift register 74LS164N. Hence, pulsing the clock is as simple as setting its value to 1, then 0. Lines 30 and 31 set the initial states of the clock and latch of the column shift register 74HC595N. Similarly, pulsing of them is as simple as setting its value to 1, then 0. The loop block will be called continuously. The loop block is a loop itself. Line 38 starts declaring the loop, which is used to loop for the 8 rows, with the variable i from 0 to 7. Line 39 gets the column bit value from the array, data. In fact, the Arduino function shift out is used to shift the bits to the column shift, register's internal register. Line 45 set the bit value for the row shift register. The bit value will be 1 only when it is looping for the first row. Then lines 48 and 49 pulse clock of the row shift register, triggering shifting of the register. Effectively, only the LEDs of the row can be turned on or off by the value of the column shift register. 
Lines 52 and 53 pulse latch of the column shift register, triggering of the internal register to its output register. Line 56 delay for a millisecond, so that the light of the on LEDs will shine through. This delay is very important for human eyes to conceive the final LEDs pattern on the 8x8 LED matrix. As said, the loop will continuously execute it. Next, I will show how to modify the sketch to use dumb display as an input means to interactively turn on or off the LEDs on the 8x8 LED matrix. At the beginning of the sketch, add code to define the dumb display object to use. Note that when the macro Bluetooth is defined, Bluetooth connectivity via HC06 is used to connect to dumb display Android app. If Bluetooth connectivity is not set up, comment out line 4. In such a case, you may need the dumb display Wi-Fi bridge to connect to dumb display Android app. Before the setup block, declare the global variable LED matrix pointing to the LED dumb display layer, which will be created and set up in the setup block. The LED layer will have 64 LEDs similar to an 8x8 LED matrix. This LED layer is supposed to be used for turning on or off the corresponding LED of the 8x8 LED matrix. Line 40 declare the header of the feedback handler, which will be added at the end of the sketch. Just before the setup block ends. First, add code to make sure all LEDs are off. Then add code to create and set up the LED dumb display layer. Line 67 sets the feedback handler for handling clicking of the LED layer. Line 68 to 71 declare a loop to turn on the LEDs of the LED layer, to mirror the initial shape to show on the 8x8 LED matrix. Notice that the bits are inverted, since for the LED layer, 1 is on, 0 is off. At the end of the loop block, call DD yield to give dumb display library a chance to do its work. At the end of the sketch, add code to actually declare the feedback handler. Line 104 starts such declaration. Line 106 checks that if the click is not a long press, turn on or off the corresponding LED of the LED matrix. Lines 107 and 108 get the position of the LED click. Line 109 toggles that LED on the LED layer. Line 110 gets the row value from the array, data. Line 111 declares and sets the mask value, simply with just the corresponding bit, 1. This mask is used to toggle the corresponding bit of the data, store in the data array. Line 112 checks whether that bit is on or off, using the mask. If the bit is on, line 114 turns the bit off, using the mask. Otherwise, when the bid if off, line 116 turns the bid on using the mask. If the click is the long press, lines 119 clear all bits of the LED layer. Lines 120 to 122 set the data array values to all one bit. That is to turn off all LEDs on the 8x8 LED matrix.